When I was a child, I've always wanted to visit the Taj Mahal. Are you familiar with it? That magnificent white monument? However, my parents said, nah, we are better not going there. According to them, and so it's like India today, the area around the Taj Mahal, for example, the essential nearby Yamuna River, is highly affected by pollution. Smell, dirt, waste. Polluted air, polluted water. Why would you treat something this beautiful like a landfill? Because you're lacking a cheap and easy alternative. The challenge lies in the fact that proper waste disposal and the disassembly of products sometimes pose health and safety risks to the workers. Certain products, such as batteries, are simply difficult to recirculate into their product life cycle. But who of you has maybe recently heard about the latest breakthrough in battery disassembly or the latest innovation in battery recycling? I hope many of you did. But why am I standing here then and talking about the innovation that we need in battery disassembly? Because all the innovations that we've encountered by now are usually in regard to electric vehicle batteries. These that you can find in your Tesla Model 3. But by a raise of hands, who of you does not, or maybe not yet, have an electric vehicle? Mm -hmm, I see. And by another raise of hands, who of you owns a hand tool drill or has ever operated one to drill in some screws to put up a painting for your mother or your father? And I believe that is the majority, because these smaller consumer electronic devices that you can find in smartphones, laptops, hand tool drills are way longer established in our everyday life and in our society. And by any means, I do not, wa do not want to disregard all the innovations and breakthroughs scientists and researchers have achieved in the field of electric vehicle batteries. No, they are fantastic and we need more of them. However, here's my first out of three takeaways for you. Do not only focus on the big things, on all these electric vehicle batteries, these huge ones, but do not forget to remember about the small things too, about the hand tool drills, about the smartphones, about the laptop batteries. Now, still, all these batteries, for example, in hand tool drills, are difficult to disassemble and to recirculate. And this is exactly what I want to change. Through my research, I strive to increase the rate of recirculated, rechargeable, consumer electronic batteries. I know it's a long term, but in short, RCBs. The goal is to receive such an RCB in its end-of-life stage, safely separate its parts, and then determine further utilization possibilities. And while doing so, I'm focusing on three key objectives that you please do not mistake with all the three takeaways that I have for you. So these are going to be safety, efficiency, and sustainability. Safety obviously comes first. Why is the dismantlement of batteries such a threat to both health and safety of the workers? It's because of all the flammable, all the materials within. There are flammable electrolytes, nickel, lead, and more. A bloating or a swelling of a battery, or the slightest damage to the outer shell of a battery cell, can already lead to an increased risk of fires and explosions to happen. And this is what I want to avoid by creating a fire mitigation concept. This concept could look like a working station that's equipped with a lot of fire agents all around it. Or maybe more like a box with a different humidity inside than we have in our atmosphere. For example, a humidity above 55%, which is a critical value above which fire is less likely to burn well, would already reduce the risk of fires and explosions to last long and maybe even to happen. Therefore, I'm trying to create the safer work environment. Moving on to efficiency. Once safety is assured, I will optimize this disassembly line regarding cycle times, different battery types, and ergonomics. Also with the state of health analysis, I want to determine the condition of the batteries. Can they be reused? So without modifying the hand tool drill at all, but just reusing the batteries? Or can they be remanufactured? Meaning that you separate the batteries from one hand tool drill and plug them into a different hand tool drill. Or can they be repurposed? You separate the batteries from one hand tool drill 
and plug them into a different object, like a flashlight where less capacity is required, a different condition of the battery. But also, the state of health analysis could determine that the batteries cannot be used after all. So the materials have to be recycled or properly disposed. With this, I also want to identify the automation opportunities that we have in this assembly line to establish a crucial foundation for future automated RCB disassembly lines. So third point, sustainability. Consider this. How many smartphones have you had throughout your life? Too many? Mm -hmm. At least I did. I personally can recall around five, and this is one of them. <laughs> so, but only one out of 20, for example this one, is going to be recycled, resulting in a mere 5% recycling rate of RCBs currently. So who of you, please raise your hand, can also remember still having a smartphone or a laptop or a hand tool drill that you've used in 2010, that you still have it somewhere at your house, in your home. Or maybe the ones before that, or maybe the five that you've used after 2010, or the two that you have used before your current smartphone. So do you see the point that I'm making here? That you are also exposing yourself to the risks that I'm trying to avoid in third world countries in disassembly facilities? You are exposing yourself to this fire and explosion risk. So here's my second out of three takeaways for you. When you come home, collect all these batteries that you know that you don't use anymore. All the smartphones from 2010. Collect them and put them either into a metal container or into a battery safety bag in order to increase the time that is available for you to get yourself and your family into safety. Or even better, bring them to a proper collection center. For example, at your local community, there's going to be a recycling center or something. Or here on campus, right next to the Rhine Center, there's a designated battery hut where you can drop off all your batteries. And they are collecting them and transporting them to a proper waste treatment plant. Or maybe in the future, to a safe disassembly facility. And I want to motivate legislators and companies alike to increase this rate with us. So who of you has maybe noticed that I did not only use the term recycle, but also something else, something very similar? Can maybe somebody of you name it? Mm -hmm, close, but recirculation was the term. Recycling, recirculation, aren't they the same? They sound so similar. No, they are not, and let me show you. Recycling acts on the level of useful applications of materials. That means that you collect water bottles, paper, cardboard, etc. They are getting cleaned and shredded down onto particle level. Then they are getting sorted and reformed into recycled products. Recycled water bottles, recycled paper, recycled cardboard. That's awesome, right? But now imagine doing that to your battery. Shredding it down onto particle level with all the flammable electrolytes, nickel, lead, and more. That is certainly going to cause a fire, an explosion, or even both. And we want to avoid that. So here's the thing. Recirculation acts on the level of extending the lifespan of a product and its parts, which is above the useful application of materials. The goal is to disassemble the product, for example, a hand tool drill, and assess whether the plastic coverage, the batteries, or the battery management system can be reused and recirculated into its product life cycle. This is what we need to enable a circular economy and also circular product life and also to enable the sustainable life that we want, right? Right? <laughs> While I may not be tackling the entire plastic waste problem, my focus on RCBs aims to enhance the worker safety, the safety of me and of you, and reduce plastic global waste. And the third key takeaway that I have for you, in my opinion, recycling might not be everything we need. Recirculation is a concept that we should put more value on and maybe pursue in a little more applications in the future. 
And I want to reduce plastic global waste not only globally, do not only think big, but also on a small scale. At my home, at your home, at the Taj Mahal. And eventually, fulfill my childhood dream of visiting the Taj Mahal. Thank you.